Okay, five minutes to uh, show you uh, five features of our ThingCell range library. And I think the first minute I will spend ex excusing myself for this and that I didn't use this newfangled format thing, but the IO stream still come naturally to me. Okay, so this is a very simple example. I just do a, I just do a transform. I could do this with a range library. Now I do this with our ThingCell library. The question is, um, what do you think? How, how large, uh, what's the size of the range? And what's the size of uh, an iterator of that range? Anybody wants to make a guess? One byte. That's very, that's not very much. <laughs> it's a little bit more. <laughs> One second. Okay, so it's, uh, it's 16. It's two pointers, essentially. For SIT ranges, it would be the same. Okay, let's make another, let's make it a little bit more complicated. Let's make it a transform and a filter. Now you know the first answer was 16. So what do you think the answer is now? And the iterator? 32. 32, wow. That would be, that would be bad. <laughs> the size of the range is 24 now. Well, it contains two functors and one pointer to the range, to the vector. Uh, but the iterator is still only 16, uh, 16 bytes compared to 24 for the ranges. So they stay constant size, even though if we keep accumulating a filter on a transform or whatever. So I think that's one nice feature. They, those don't increase in size. Now let's make it even more interesting. Let's say our vector, oh, I have the same bug as I had earlier in my presentation. That Visual Studio Code is hanging. Um, uh, let's make it a bit more interesting. Let's make the vector a temporary. And now I return a transform and a filter of a temporary. Well, I can't do that with the std range library, can I? Because it, I think it always needs a reference. But our range library can actually accumulate that vector inside itself. So we can detect that we are passing an R value reference to a temporary, and then we can dynamically decide, or at compile time decide, do we have to keep a copy of that thing around? Or do we uh, just store a reference to that vector? So now when I run that, of course my range is pretty large. It contains the entire vector now. The iterators keep the same size. So I think that's a nice feature too. We can accumulate temporaries. That's often super helpful. And not only that, but we also have a another concept of a range, which is a generator range. So a generator range is anything that can output stuff. It has a functor that takes some think object, sync object, sorry, and it can output stuff into that sync. And that example here just outputs five random numbers, so not very useful. But that's a range. I can do for each over that thing and pretend it would be a range with iterators and then I output those five random numbers. And now, because it's a range, I could, I could do a filter as well. What was it? It's even, I think. Sa save. Saving is always important. This should be quick. I have one minute left. There you go. And now, I only output the even numbers. So I filter this generator range. Also kind of nice feature because very often it's much easier to write something like that that outputs stuff and you don't have iterators because you don't know how to represent those iterators actually. You know, I just have a thing that can output stuff. And using some range algorithms on that can be helpful. So last but not least, we not only have uh, some range concepts, we also have uh, some algorithms. And this is my favorite algorithm because we use it so frequently. We use it so frequently that we made this a single algorithm. You have some vector in that case, and you want to sort it, find the unique elements, and do all that in place. And I think, I think Arno mentioned that in his talk. Uh, we had this in our code base maybe 20 times. And 18 of those, it wasn't implemented correctly. So we implemented it once in our library correctly. And that is it, 36 left. Thank you.